Hello, my name is Mark Walsh from Integration Training. This is my top five mistakes that body mind teachers make. So this video is for people who be like yoga teachers, martial art teachers, fellow embodiment teachers, um, people teaching anything that involves body mind work across the whole spectrum. So I'm from a family of teachers and I'm a bit of a teaching geek. Um, I teach other trainers and coaches to work with the body and um, I've really studied teaching. I've done over 10,000 hours of teaching different things ranging from classroom activities to many different sports, for example, uh, such as Aikido, I've taught in a whole bunch of different countries, of kids and adults, I've taught business people, I've taught sports, archery, trampoline, all kinds of things. And what I see is that some things just work better than others in terms of teaching. So I'd like to share with you some of the things that I see don't work very well, so they're mistakes to avoid. Okay, let's start with ourselves. So a key one with any teacher is to embody what you teach. So I teach body-mind practices, embodiment. So it's really crucial for me to do my own body practices, you know, which I do on an almost daily basis. Um, I, th I think for teachers who are out there who don't have their own practice, say so you're a yoga teacher, as always teaching yoga, obviously you need to do yoga. And I'd say to a factor of several times more than you're actually teaching, um, as well as having that kind of weight of history behind you. So you've gone, you know, again, several times deeper than you're actually teaching, so that you um, embody what you're teaching, because ultimately, Teaching is always relational. Like right now, you're not just learning from the words, you're learning from me, you know, whether you, how I come across, whether you like me or not, whether I seem like I um, have that kind of embodied depth of, of what I'm talking about. So um, that's the first one, it's absolutely vital. Second mistake to avoid is not having a clear aim or not linking whatever you're teaching to what people care about. So um, I've sort of been in yoga classes or dance classes and thought, why exactly are we doing this? You know, it wasn't really clear from the outset which is hard to orientate around as a student. And also the, the critical question, like what's in it for your students? Uh, one of my teachers used to say, for the sake of what, are, they, are you doing something? And that actually needs to be vital that someone feels motivated to pay attention to learn that whatever you're doing has a clear aim, clear structure, and is, is linked to what they care about. And this really relates also to another mistake of not bringing things um, off the mat, so from the martial arts studio or the yoga studio into life. It's kind of if, if all you're doing is helping people for an hour or two hours, then that's great, it's a break from their lives, but how does that really integrate to the rest of their lives? Um, I always challenge yoga teachers and say, why don't you have people get your mobile phones out in the class? Um, you know, we use our mobile phones and yet we do yoga separately from that and we just sort of pretend they're bad, but then as soon as the class is over, you're back on the phone. Yeah? So how do we integrate? So third mistake I see people make is not to get informed consent. Um, so either they're teaching people who necessarily might not want to be there, like kids have been told or business people have been told to be there, or they're touching without consent, which is you know, a huge boundary violation. And um, at yoga classes, when I've seen teachers who will just adjust people in quite personal ways without checking with them that it's okay. And I think particularly when we're working with the body, uh, it's absolutely vital we respect another person's autonomy and, and choice over their own body. So for me, that's a, that's a real non-negotiable, that one. A fourth mistake I see a lot of teachers making is not um, giving doable, clear instructions. So people will often, for example, confuse an end result with an instruction. So the classic for this, for example, would be meditation. You might say, um, empty your mind. And someone's sitting there going, how the hell do I do that? I, you know, and they feel like a failure and they can't do it. Instead of giving them an instruction, like put your awareness, your attention on your breathing, these sensations of air going in and out of your nose. Something doable which they can do. Um, or they'll make it too esoteric, they'll sort of say, move your energy to your fifth chakra. And um, you know, if they already know, have some sense of what that is, that's fine, but a lot of people won't. So it needs to be broken down. It might simply be visualise this, or uh, do that, or you know, very concrete things. So, um, yeah, I'd say 90% of the yoga and dance classes I go to have undoable uh, kind of metaphor or result oriented instructions rather than doable instructions. The fifth and last mistake I see a lot of teachers making is not um, individually or culturally adapting a practice to who they're working with. So maybe they've learnt it in Asia, or they've learnt it in America, and they're now doing it in England, um, or they've learnt it with a um, more alternative crowd, and other with business people, or vice versa. Yeah. Um, so you need to adapt to what you're doing, and for that it can, you know, it's helpful to have a range of tools and a way of range of metaphors, a way of talking about things so that you're adapting to the individual, like their particular learning style, for example, um, whether they're more kinesthetic, more auditory, more visual, and also to the culture you're in. So I teach in a lot of different countries, and how I teach in Israel is different from how I teach in Germany or Brazil. You have to adapt. 
So they're my top five mistakes. If you want to add some more in the comments, um, you know, we all make these, I, I make these myself. Um, I guess a big mistake I've made in this video is uh, overly relying on words rather than experience. You know, that'd be another mistake. Um, so this, for me, body mind teaching is, is not best talked about, but actually experienced. Um, so feel free to experiment and try it and see what works out of those and see if they can improve what you do. I, I think we can all improve what we're, what we're teaching. So um, yeah, I hope that's useful. Thank you.